Down here at the circular key end of the Sydney CBD is where all of Sydney's grand colonial buildings are. Solid, rectangular, sandstone edifices. But there's a new kid on the block, the stunning one Bly Street, all glass and steel, curving around its corner site. But I'm actually here to see what the dynamics are inside the building. In particular, I'm here to look at the stunning fit-out Bates might have done for law firm Clayton Utes. Uh, we'd been in the build, our previous building for about 15 years at the time we went to the market and we were looking for a building with cutting-edge technology, we wanted a large floor plate, we wanted something that had an impressive atrium and public areas for our clients and staff and we were also looking for something with it that could provide a really healthy environment for our people. We said that we wanted something that was timeless. We didn't want something fatty. We wanted it to have an elegant look. We also wanted it to be warm and welcoming both for clients and staff as a counterfoil for the glass and steel because there is a lot of structure in this building. Now, tell me about the journey to number one Bly Street because I know it was quite a long journey. So how did you come to end up this particular building? We got many uh, submissions and we went through all of those. We looked at quite a lot of buildings and it was number one Bly Street that really fitted the bill best. And so we did a lot of, we went through all of the plans and specifications, did a lot of due diligence on the services in particular. And then we negotiated a heads of agreement with Dexas which took about six months and then about another six months negotiating the agreement for lease. Our focus groups told us that our people, our lawyers wanted offices, not open plan, and so but we wanted to be able to achieve the connectivity, lines of sight and transparency that you get with open plan within an, an office environment. And I think the design that Bates Smart came up with, which took a while and is quite innovative with a, a radial display of offices as well as perimeter offices, I think that achieved the best of both worlds of open plan and offices. For interior architects Bates Smart, the challenge was to come up with a design which would not only serve the present needs of Clayton Utes, but as project director Simon Swaney explains, also their future needs. So their brief looked to their core values which are about transparency, integrity, and in addition to that, what they're really seeking to do was to try and find a more egalitarian basis for the practice of law. So in terms of the brief, we talked much about the idea of connectivity uh, within the tenancy, the idea of uh, equality and people getting equal uh, benefits of natural light and outlook. And so there is really this whole concept is layered into the tenancies as it emerges. see, what the architects have done here is to make every element of the fit-out respond to the curvilinear form of the building. And this applies to everything, to the sofas, to the timber elements in the ceiling, even the floor tiles, along with all manner of meeting rooms, breakout areas and pots like the one I'm in at the moment. Now, of course, this is a glass, steel, 
concrete building which celebrates its structure. So it was important to warm it up a little bit. And what Bates Smart have done here is to give it that warmth, humanise it a little bit, for example, with these beautiful detailing, like this lovely timber finish on the walls and the elegant Corian hard surfaces. What do you think this project says about uh, legal and <coughs> accounting firms, that is, companies which have significant privacy and uh, security issues and protocols and their changing views on the workplace, such as open plan versus enclosed offices, things right, like that's that. That's a really potent question, Paul. <laughs> that's a difficult one, and I'm sure all designers and architects are confronting that at many levels. In professional services, there's no doubt that the challenge is about maintaining some degree of acoustic privacy, about trying to enable people to do the focus work that is very much a part of particularly legal practice and to address issues of confidentiality. I think this building uh, offers that because of the way it's configured in terms of uh, the segregation of floors and so on. But equally, the Clay Utes did come to the decision that they would continue with an office-based environment to address those concerns. But I think importantly what they've done is to standardise the forms of accommodation. So whilst they still have offices, they still have the flexibility that they may want to be able to regroup, uh, establish Chinese walls, to have different groups operating as, as it would occur within each of the floors. But it's not all work and no play. The breakout areas are lively and respond to the form of the building and to the central atrium. Even the library becomes a feature, forming an integral part of the main cafe area. So, this elegant yet stimulating workplace not only serves the specific needs of Clayton Utes, but does so in a building which by its own form supports the Clayton Utes brand as a dynamic, progressive and future-oriented company.